Hello everyone, I'm Wafa. I hope all of you are doing fine and well. Today in this video we'll be talking about um, ectopic pregnancy. So basically we'll be doing it as a case scenario like all of our other videos. Um, ectopic pregnancy is an early pregnancy care module topic and it's also breaking bad news because you know pregnancy loss is not easy for a patient especially if it was a planned pregnancy and she really wanted the baby, okay? So in our scenario, I have two volunteers that will be dividing the case between them and they will be doing it with a role play who will take the position of the patient. Um, after each of them, I'll be giving feedback. So let's come and see our case scenario. It's in front of you on the screen. So I'll just be reading it from the laptop. You're the SD5 covering the gynae assessment unit. You're about to see 30 years old Olivia Roberts who was sent by her GP complaining of amenorrhea for five weeks and a brownish vaginal discharge. She reported no abdominal pain, no shoulder tip pain. She has been married for seven years and she's a para zero plus three. So you can see she has three losses until now. Her first pregnancy was a right tubal ectopic pregnancy for which she had a salbingectomy done. Second pregnancy was a left tubal ectopic pregnancy for which she had a left salpingotomy. The third pregnancy was a missed miscarriage at 10 weeks and was uh, managed medically. She was seen by the ST2 earlier today in the GAU. Her pulse rate is 70. Her blood pressure is 120 over 80. A pelvic ultrasound scan and beta ECG was done because this is the usual thing. Because all of you know that um, if a woman had a previous ectopic pregnancy, she is advised that next time when she gets pregnant, because there's a chance that it can happen again, meaning recurrence, she should come early in for a scan if she um, develops amenorrhea. So it's good that this patient came into the hospital. The SD2 now comes and informs you that the results are out. Go and see the patient. Let's come and see the test results. This is a pelvic ultrasound scan. This is the picture. You can, it's obvious that it's a tubal ectopic pregnancy. <clears throat> it shows M2 trine cavity, normal individual thickness. Mass is seen on the left tube with a fetal heart activity. This is the crown rum length gestational sac. The gestational age is five weeks and four days. There's no free fluid in the parts of Douglas, normal right and left ovaries. The beta HCG level is 52,400, so right away you will see uh, to which week it's corresponding to. And in this table, it's around six weeks. So in the exam, you would have a reference table for any lab test results. So Nafisa would be breaking the news. She will take around four minutes. I'll give feedback and then we'll come in here and Niha. Niha will be discussing the management plan. She will take six minutes. So I'll go right away to Nafisa. Just let me press on the computer. Yes. I'm Dr. Nafisa, one of the doctors in the gynec assessment clinic today. Can I call you Olivia? Yes, doctor. Uh, how are you doing, Olivia? Um, doctor, I'm, I'm very anxious. I'm very worried. I am having the same symptoms what I had in my previous two ectopics. I am simply waiting for my ultrasound report. I don't know. I, I feel something is not good going to happen to me now. Your concerns are quite understandable, Olivia. Is that okay? Can I go ahead explaining the reports with you? Yes, doctor, please. Okay, Olivia. I confirm your name, the NHS report, NHS number on your report. Okay. The, uh, the blood test which has been done has shown that your pregnancy test is positive and the pregnancy hormone values are corresponding to five weeks of your pregnancy, which matches your last okay. menstrual period. Oh, okay, now, now, now coming to your scan report, after confirmation of your name and NHS number, uh, do you have uh, any idea about your scan report? Have anyone ex discussed with you before, Olivia? No, doctor. Nobody told me anything. That's why I'm having so much of anxiety. Okay, Olivia. Unfortunately, Olivia, I don't have a good news to share with you. Would you like anyone to be with you while I go through the results? 
Hello, doctor. My partner is busy. Please tell me what happened. Olivia, the report says that your womb is empty, and instead, the uh, in your uh, the instead your baby your pregnancy is growing in the left tube, with the baby's heart being notice heartbeat noticeable, and you as you already know. Yeah. As you already know, the tube is a thin muscular structure, which cannot accommodate a growing baby, and which will end up in bursting and internal bleeding, which can be dangerous to your life. I am afraid this condition of tubal pregnancy will also end up in removal of your left tube, Olivia. I am sorry that I am the bearer of this news. Oh my God, doctor! Why again? So, doctor, does it mean that I will never be able to become pregnant? I will have no children at all. No, Olivia, not really like that. Still, you have a chance of having your own child. That is by a procedure called in vitro fertilization. Do you know anything about this, Olivia? No, doctor. Only little I know about it. Okay, let me quickly explain you about this, Olivia. Since your ovaries are still left intact, and these are the organs you that produce the eggs, we can harvest the eggs from you and fertilize it with your partner's sperm outside in a laboratory, and we can replace those fertilized eggs back into your womb. In this way, you can have a biological child of yours. Am I clear about this, Olivia? Yes, doctor. Any other questions you have, Olivia? No. Sorry, Olivia. Once again, for uh, for that bad news. Okay, I am giving you this patient information leaflet about assisted reproductive technique, and also a leaflet on ectopic pregnancy. Please go through it. On an urgent basis, I will discuss your case with my consultant too. Any questions you have, Olivia? No. Thanks for your time, Olivia. Okay, let's start. Sorry. Sorry for that. Okay, just let me close the recording so we don't mix things up. Um, Nafisa, well done. Um, in terms of some sentences that you used, I really like them very much. Uh, you were empathizing, you did show that. Uh, there are a few corrections that I want to make. Let's come and see what you did well. So I've written them down. You introduced yourself and role, you confirmed uh, why the patient here, sorry, the recording at the beginning, there was uh, the introduction part, I think uh, Nafisa at the beginning said, um, hello, I'm Dr. Nafisa, uh, sorry, Olivia Roberts, she said yes, so you heard the recording from when the patient said yes, sorry for that initial part that was missing, uh, so you introduced yourself and role, you confirmed uh, the patient's ID, uh, you greeted the patient, you acknowledged her concern when she said that I'm worried about the scan report. So you said that uh, your, what did you say? Your concerns are quite understandable. Um, you also confirmed the ID on the results before telling her about the results. You empathized um, after giving the news. So you said, I'm sorry to be the bearer of such news, but you could have empathized more again in such a situation. What do you think? Your tone of voice was really, really good, uh, Nafisa. So that's a really important element of breaking bad news. And of course, that would be in addition to your body language, the way you sit, the way you... So you would lean forward like this when you explain the results or breaking the news. You would have like sit relaxed uh, like in any normal station. So you usually lean forward a little bit like this. So these are all the good things. And... If it was a first time ectopic pregnancy, it would have been perfect. I wouldn't have had any more comments, but this is a third ectopic pregnancy. And I felt that you increased the patient's anxiety a little bit more by going through the traditional steps that we all know of breaking bad news. Um, usually in the exam, listen to the patient, pick up the cues she's telling you, and then you respond accordingly. You can modify your counseling is basically chatting and meeting the needs of the patients in front of you, not going according to the steps that you already have in your head. One, two, three, four. I have to really cover them. So let's come and see um, 
when you open it here, the mistakes that you did and what they reflect. Once you um, introduced and you greeted her, let me read out the sentence that your patient said. And by the way, I really liked um, your patient. She played the role uh, really well, so pass that on to her. Uh, she said, I'm very anxious and worried. I'm waiting for my scan. I feel something is not good is going to happen to me now. It's obvious, Nafisa, that she does not know about the scan report. So what you did, you inquired about her knowledge of the results after that. That shows that you did not pick up on her cues and you were not listening to the, listening to the patient. So you can omit that step, take it away completely. You do not have to mention it because it is obvious, right? Um, you then increased her anxiety by going through all the steps of breaking bad news. There's no situation awareness here because She's already anxious from the moment she stepped in. You delayed the breaking of the bad news by, by um, confirming her name and age. Okay, that's that's a good point. You wouldn't really want to skip it. But then what you did is that um, you explained the blood tests first. You told her that she's pregnant. And then after that, right away, you inquired about if she wants someone to be with her. Can you see what I mean? This would increase the patient's anxiety more and more because she will know right now that you're about to give her bad news, but you're not you're not actually saying it, and you're giving her bits by bits. Here's a little bit, and then here's a little bit, and then you stop and ask if she wants someone to be with her, and then you give her the rest of the news. So don't do that. She is suspecting that she may be having an ectopic pregnancy, so after you confirm the patient's ID on the results, name, age, and NHS number, right away. First warning shot, second warning shot, and um, tell her straightforward you have an ectopic pregnancy. Now, this will take us to the other mistake that you did. You explained what ectopic pregnancy is. This would reflect that you didn't really read the scenario well. The patient had two previous ectopic pregnancies. Wouldn't she know what an ectopic pregnancy is and what an ectopic pregnancy means? That it should end, it shouldn't be allowed to go forward. Despite that, you explained everything in detail. That wasted time for you because um, I did want you to empathize more towards the end after breaking the bad news. This case that I really, really needs a lot of empathy. Um, so what you could have said that, um, Amy, I'm sorry, uh, unfortunately I don't have good news. I'm sorry to tell you that you have another ectopic pregnancy on the left tube. And then you go silent. That's it. No need for an explanation right now, okay? Later on when you come to the management plan and she absorbs the news, she's relaxed a little bit and she is ready to continue discussing with you, then you can discuss with her the fact that um, it can lead to rupture, that's why it has to be treated right now, okay? The th second point, sorry, one through three, fourth point is that there was not enough empathy given in this scenario. Um, and that would reflect below average skills in uh, dealing with patients' emotions and reactions towards bad news. So I've written here what your patient said after you broke the news. You said, um, she told you, um, why doctor, why again? And then she paused for a little bit. You didn't talk and then she asks you, does that mean I will not have children? Oh, sorry, she didn't say that. She actually said, I will not be able to have children again. When she said, why doctor, why again? Take this opportunity to empathize again. Um, you can, for example, tell her that, um, What's her name again? Sorry, I'm being really, really bad uh, with names. Olivia. All right, so you can tell her that, um, Olivia, I can see that uh, this sh this news is quite shocking for you. I can see that you're very upset. I wish I had uh, better news for you. Write sentences like these just to comfort uh, the patient. And when she said that I will not have children, right away, and if you say jumped, 
to IVF a solution. She still has one tube, and this time um, she can have a salpingotomy done or a salpingectomy according. So she can have a salpingotomy um, and it should be followed up, everything would be fine. Or she can have a salpingotomy that would end up with salpingectomy, or from the beginning have a salpingectomy. Sorry. So it would depend according to what will happen. Always in the exam, don't go towards one direction. Have many possibilities and just communicate them to the patient in a very, very simple way. Um, so let me um, tell you how you would go through this. So just let me take this away because I have your patient's sentences written down here. Okay, so after you introduce yourself and the patient told you, I'm very anxious, I'm worried, I'm waiting for my scan, I feel something is not good, um, that's going to happen to me now. You tell her, um, I've gone through your notes, Olivia, and I came across your previous three pregnancies, three pregnancy losses, and your concerns are quite understandable. Since you're quite anxious and worried, do you want to call in someone to be with you as we discuss your test results? Because I'll be giving you a lot of information. No, doctor, that's fine. Um, I, I don't want anyone to be with me. All right, Olivia, so I'll go on straight forward to your test results. Let me just confirm your name and age and NHS number. Yes, that's correct. Unfortunately, I don't have good news, Olivia. I'm sorry to tell you that the results shows that you are pregnant with another ectopic pregnancy in your left tube. Go silent for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She started crying. Why? Why, doctor? Why again? Why is this happening to me? I know that this has come as a shock to you and you weren't expecting this and you were hoping uh, for a better result. I wish I had better news, Olivia. I really wish so. And then she will ask you, I'm so, then tell her, I'm sorry to be the bearer of such news. I will not have children at all, doctor. I won't be able to have children. Then acknowledge that, what can I say? Um, acknowledge that the thoughts that are going in her mind at the moment um, are really valid, okay? Uh, given the fact that she has previous ectopic pregnancy, so you can tell her, I've written it down so I won't say any mistakes. I can see where this is coming from, Olivia, and I can see that uh, you are. Then the way that you're thinking is quite understandable. No, it doesn't mean that you will not have more children. Your last pregnancy was inside the womb, and I do understand that you miscarried that one. But miscarriage can be just a one-off event. Hope is not gone, Olivia. You have ovaries that are working fine, and you have. A healthy womb and there are many ways through which you can get pregnant and have a baby and then pause a little bit if she reacts you acknowledge as well and then before you want to go on forward you have to take permission to continue or to end the consultation because she has to know that she has the right to stop the consultation I can see Olivia how upsetting and distressing uh, this is for you at the moment. Do you want me to stop and maybe you can call in a family or friend to be with you and then I can come in a little bit later and we can discuss the management plan? Uh, usually in the exam, the patient wouldn't tell you yes and then you won't have uh, more time to go through the scenario. Um, you'll just be sitting there in silence. So in the exam, she would tell you, no, doctor, continue. I want to know. All right, Nafisa, so... This is how you should um, modify uh, your approach to breaking bad news and um, meaning, I, I mean like modify it in um, satisfying the patient's needs, okay? Go according to how she's going, she's going right, you go right, she's going left, you go left, she's going straight, you go straight, she's going in circles, you go in circles as well, okay? All right, um, I have here on the screen, uh, a slide for all of you, and Nafisa especially, for you to compare between when you break uh, bad news in a patient who has a first ectopic pregnancy for the first time and a patient already 
had one and she's quite anxious because usually patients after a first ectopic pregnancy they are counseled about the probability of it happening again and to come in early next time to have a scan so when they miss their period you would be anxious and waiting for the scan results to see is it another ectopic or not so I've written here that in the traditional breaking bad news steps for the first time you inquire the patient wants any company with her um, inquire about her knowledge of the test results or the investigations you then give a first warning shot so you confirm the name and age and the result you give the first warning shot second warning shot you then give the news you don't just tell her you have an ectopic pregnancy because she won't understand what it is you tell her she has an ectopic pregnancy you draw for her and make sure that um, you flip the paper around so the paper or your notebook would be like this don't draw like this in the patient's front of you because she will see it upside down. Do it like this and then draw for her. The uterus, the tubes, the ovaries and the cervix and tell her usually uh, the pregnancy is implanted here but when it implants itself in the tube, of course, you would say it in um, layman terminology, not jargon like what I'm doing right now. And then you explain to her the ectopic and you don't just stop here. You explain to her the prognosis, what's the outcome of such an ectopic pregnancy just the same way uh, that Nafisa mentioned it all right and then after that you go silent um, count for 10 seconds and not out loud after 10 seconds the patient during that 10 seconds some of them can cry some of them can get anxious angry some of them would just be in complete silence and just be looking at you so they would be in denial um, if the patient is crying, you then empathize. Let's say if she's in denial, she's just looking at you. You then want to check, has she really absorbed and processed and understood the news that you told her? Because she's just staring at you. She's not showing any reaction. So if you want to make sure, then you ask her, Olivia, um, are you aware of, our, of what I have just told you right now? I'm sorry to be the one telling you such news. Can you tell me what are you thinking about right now? And then after that, she will open up and talk to you. So that's how you mold and modify uh, your communication with a patient according to how she responds. And then you empathize. That's the normal way. It can come another way if the patient is anxious from the beginning. You acknowledge, show that you do see that she's quite anxious, even if she doesn't say it can be obvious in, in her face, her body language, the tone of her voice. I think I can see you're, you're very anxious. Can you tell me what you're worried about? Well, doctor, I'm worried that my this pregnancy would be another ectopic pregnancy because they I had two previous ones and they told me there's a high chance I can have it again. Your concerns are really understandable, Olivia, and uh, now I can see why you're uh, very worried and anxious. Uh, would you like to call in someone to be with you just for comfort? and support as we discuss the test results. That would really help a lot. And then you go on and break the news for her, okay? So you don't really inquire in this scenario, the second one that I mentioned right now, about her previous knowledge because no need. She already communicated to you and told you verbally that she's worried that she has another ectopic. And then you break the bad news, tell her I'm sorry that you do have another ectopic pregnancy in your left tube, and that's it. Please don't go on further. This is her fourth pregnancy loss. Let her absorb the news that you have just told her. After that, there's plenty of time to talk about that. But that initial part is very important because um, preparing the patient for the news, really, and giving her the news in an empathetic way, it lessens the shock and emotional trauma that we follow after receiving the news, okay? All right. So, Nafisa, I hope that you benefit from the feedback. Um, if you have any questions, you can just send me on private. You have my Telegram number, and I would want you to do it again. Just send it to me, and I'll just give you personal feedback on Telegram, okay? And say hi to uh, your role play. I don't, I don't know if she's your friend or family member, but say hi and tell her that I really liked her, her role, okay? Um, now let's go to, just let me put the screen, let's go to Niha. Niha, she would be taking over and talking about the management plan. 
Olivia, should I continue with the management option? Oh uh, yeah, doctor. Doctor, is there some problem with me? Olivia, please don't blame yourself. There is nothing that you had done wrong or you could have done to provo- avoid this ectopic pregnancy. Doctor, why is it happening every time with me? I understand your concern, Olivia. Let me explain to you. Generally, females have a chance of 1 in 90 having a chance of ectopic pregnancy. The incidence of ectopic pregnancy increases when there is a previous history of ectopic pregnancy and it increases to 7 in 10 females having an ectopic pregnancy with a previous history of ectopic pregnancy. Also, when there are history of any tubal surgery, the chance of ectopic pregnancy increases. Along with that, if the patient is u- uh, using any kind of copper coil on any kind of progesterone pills, undergoing IVF treatment or is a chronic smoker, in those situations, the chances of ectopic pregnancy increases. Am I clear so far? Yeah, doctor. Coming to the management option, Olivia, there are certain management options like going for expected management where we can just wait and watch and monitor the pregnancy hormones. Uh, it, it can be done in early pregnancies. The other option is going for uh, medical management where we give injectable methotrexate and it helps in gradually, uh, decre- uh, gradually decreasing the ectopic pregnancy. But Olivia, at presently I am not in a position to offer you both the options because your pregnancy hormones are, are on a higher side and in the ectopic pregnancy, the heartbeat is present. So the only management option available with us is going for a surgical management. For surgical management... Okay, so I'll pause here and then we'll go on further because I have a couple of comments. Neha, your tone of voice is really nice. Your pace is good as well. And I really like the fact that when you started off, you took permission from the patient to continue and talk about the management plan. So that's a very nice point in ectopic pregnancy. Um, just let me see here because I've written down the points that uh, you mentioned. Um, and like I said for Nafisa, that ask permission to continue and if she tells you yes you can continue and that's when you stepped in and told her um, it's okay if I discuss with you the management plan after that be explicit from the beginning and tell her that she can stop you at any time during the consultation all right if she feels that she can't take it anymore it's very difficult for her because that's really um, understandable in when, when a patient uh, receives break uh, sorry receives uh, bad news. Okay, so you would want to tell her about that and if she tells you okay, you then go on and talk about the management plan. And um, The patient right away asked you, is there a problem with me? I really like that you assured her it's not her fault and not to blame herself. But when a patient asks you a question like that, before answering, ask her. Inquire about why is she thinking that that way. So you can ask her, um, Olivia, could you, could you tell me why, why are you thinking that there's something wrong with you? And then she will tell you, well, because I had three pre- two previous ectopic pregnancies, I had a miscarriage, and now this is happening again to me. I think that something is wrong with my body. I will not be able to have children. Then you would tell her that the same way that you did. But you did inquire about... Um, uh, sorry. Um, when you inquire about... Why she's thinking like that, it would take you on to the next question, which is, um, I had previous ectopics and a miscarriage is happening to me again. Why is it happening to me? And I like that you did acknowledge um, her concerns about the repeated ectopics, pregnancies, and you explained to her risk factors for ectopic, but you can personalize it more and cut on the time that you spent talking about, for example, previous surgeries, um, well, previous surgery would apply to her case scenario. Um, previous infections, STIs, um, IUCD, loop. Uh, but you, and you don't know if she had an STI before or she had a loop inserted, don't you? So specify it to the patient in front of you and you can tell her that... Um, sorry, I just want to read the patient's question. Why is it happening um, every time to me? 
So um, you would tell her that, um, Olivia, when um, a woman has an ectopic pregnancy, there is a chance that uh, it can happen again. And if he has, she has two ectopics, there is a increased chance it can happen uh, for a third time. Um, that's because of the ectopic uh, being a condition that can recur and also because you did have surgery on your tube. So both of these causes are the reason why you had it again. But I don't want you to lose hope. There is still a chance that you can have baby. Right, and then you continue. Um, you then went and started and wanted to talk about your management options. I really like that you omitted the expectant and the methotrexate and you justified why surgery is the only option because of um, the beta HCG and of course it's basic because of the um, viable ectopic pregnancy. You could have saved time on this as well because the patient had two previous ectopic, didn't she? She knows, of course, what expectant management is, what medical management is. So you can just tell her that um, in this, uh, sorry, this time, um, the management option would be through surgery because the reason is that baby's heartbeat is there. So giving you medication or waiting and seeing will not be an option. All right, so you stop here. And then you go on and talk about the surgery. Let's go and see what you said about surgery. Punishment. First, we need to admit you, and there will be a team of doctors that will be involved in your care. Am I clear, sir? Yeah. yeah, doctor, doctor, but I can't get admitted. It's my anniversary after two days. I just want to be at home for my anniversary. I don't want to get admitted. Mm -hmm. Olivia, I understand your concern. Let me explain to you, Olivia. Uh, the ectopic pregnancy is in one of the tubes, okay? The tubes are not generally thin, and as the pregnancy goes, there are chances that the tube may tear out and there may occur bleeding inside the uh, abdomen, okay? If it does occur, sometimes the bleeding is so torrential that it may be life-threatening for you. Olivia, I don't mean to, uh, to scare you, but your safety is my utmost priority. So we generally recommend to, uh, in this situation to go for surgical management. Should I explain you the surgical uh, options available? Yeah, doctor. Olivia, basically surgically management can be done through a keyhole surgery or an open surgery. Uh, we generally will first think of going for a keyhole surgery where we can, uh, as one of your tube is uh, being removed in the previous ectopic pregnancy, we can do what is for a keyhole surgery. We can just give a nick on the other tube and remove the pregnancy tissues. This will be done under anesthesia. Generally, uh, complete uh, sleep medication will be given. The details of the anesthesia will be discussed with you with the, uh, uh, by the sleep doctors. The uh, for uh, this procedure, uh, you may have to stay for one to two days. It uh, after the procedure, we will be monitoring your pregnancy hormones. There are chances that if your pregnancy hormone does not decrease or there is persistent rise or evidence of presence of pregnancy tissue, we may have to do a second surgery and remove that tube. Also, Olivia, if there is increased bleeding inside or if it is difficult to remove the pregnancy tissues because you already previously had two operatives, in those situations, we may have to remove your tube in this operation itself. I understand that you are keen to have a baby. If it happens that we had to remove your second tube also, in those situations, I would be an option for future pregnancy. Am I clear so far? Olivia, as we are going for the surgical management, definitely surgeries have their own risk, like injury to the bowel, bladder, chances of excessive bleeding and requiring for blood transfusion, plus uh, anesthesia risk, the risk of infection for which the care antibiotics uh, will be given to you. Olivia, are you comfortable getting admitted? Yeah, doctor. If that is best for me, I would get admitted. 
definitely i asked this um, anesthetist doctor that is a sleep doctor to meet you and explain the further things and also inform the ot team my nurse will be there with you and i'll be back with my consultant so that if you have any other concern we'll try to address that also is it fine yeah doctor thank you hello olivia should okay sorry for that uh, well done Neha. i really liked your counseling it's perfect well done in terms of talking about the management options i really like the fact that um you told her about salpidectomy and then there's a possibility of salpidectomy and if salpidectomy happens of course she would know that she won't have any tubes left you address that part right away that she can go uh, for ivf so let's come and see um the comments that i want to give you you did recommend admission well done, so that's a safety point. And then the patient refused admission to be admitted, you addressed um, that uh, really well. You could also add to it, Niha, that um, if you do get admitted today and agree to go on for surgery, by the time of your anniversary, you would be at home well and fine. Right, so this is how you say it. And of course, in addition to what you said about the rupture of the tube, uh, bleeding, death and all of that and complications. I really like the way you explained your uh, surgical options. She had uh, two previous ectopics, two previous operations, so don't forget adhesions, increased risk of injury, the operation may be difficult to do it laparoscopically. So mention uh, that to her, that's considered part patient safety so you can tell her that since you had two previous operation uh, there is an increased chance of injury to your organs nearby and um, in addition to that uh, we would want to do it by keyhole uh, surgery but it may be difficult because of the scar tissue so in that case it may be converted to an open surgery just a small cut above your bikini line all right so this is how you mention it um, Niha, I, 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 what you did, um, I realized that a lot of people do it. They end the consultation without um, coming to a conclusion with the patient what she wants. You ended it without knowing if the patient would want to have the surgery or not. You did reconfirm with her if she wants to be admitted, but not if she wants to go for surgery. Right? So ask her. So Olivia, what are your thoughts about the surgery? Would you want to go ahead with it? They tell you yes. And because she came alone, she's going to be admitted and she agreed for that. She's going to have surgery as well. She needs someone to be with her. So tell her that um, you can call in a family um, or a family member or a friend to come and stay with you. Right, so this is how you bring it up. You did ask if she has any questions in between. Uh, at the end as well, before ending any consultation, if you have some few seconds, ask her, is there anything else I can help you with today? And empathize. I'm sorry again, Olivia, to be meeting you under such circumstances. Okay, if you need to ask any questions at any time, just tell the midwife and I'll be called in and we can discuss. She'll tell you, okay? So always show the patients that you are there support them at any time that they want to answer their questions when uh, they want some questions to be answered. Um, patients when they are admitted for an ectopic pregnancy usually a full blood count is done and a group and safe so tell her at the end uh, the midwife will be coming taking a sam blood sample from you just to check your blood levels and also to check your blood group. And I just remembered an important point, Niha, when you talked about surgery and its risk, bleeding, blood transfusion, you do not know if she's a Jehovah's Witness or not, so ask her. When you, just when you come to that bit of, you may bleed heavily, you may need to receive blood. Do you have any objections about uh, receiving blood at all? She would tell you no. You ask it here because there's no information gathering. Of course, if there was information gathering at the beginning, you would have to inquire about blood group and uh, reservation for blood transfusion, okay? So this is all what I have for both of you. Both of you, Nafis and Neha, you did really well. Your communication skills uh, using um, layman terminology are really good. You just need to learn to modify 
how you talk, how you communicate, and most importantly, listen, all right? Look to pick up the patient's uh, cues and body language and communicate according to the scenario in front of you, not according to what you have in your head, the steps of breaking bad news. When should I say an empathy sentence? You could re-modify it and empathize at the beginning, for example, and then break the news and you can do it like that. Okay, uh, so I hope both of you have benefited from um, the feedback. If both of you, if you have any question, you can just send me on my telegram. If you want to repeat the scenario again with your lovely role play, you can send them to me. I'll just give you personal feedback. Okay, bye-bye everyone.